So what you've been up to, David Shankle here on the phone? Well, what have I been up to these days? I have my new band, DSG, the third new band, working on the third DSG record, uh, getting ready to be shooting some instructional DVDs, uh, talking to a couple of different companies that I might be releasing it with, either the uh, Rock House Method or Shred Academy. I've got my new Dean DS729 fret shred machine it's a seven string made for me custom by dean it's a prototype it will be unveiled at the nam show at the dean booth this year and uh we'll be doing an autograph signing on friday from 5 30 or 4 30 to 6 30 myself michelangelo badio vinnie moore and uh, quite a few other guys yuli roth will all be there friday and saturday doing signings and interviewing and talking about the guitar Working on some guitar clinics coming up, hopefully, with my former drummer of Man of War, Rhino, that we did the Platinum CD Triumph of Steel with. And, uh, you know, doing a lot of guest solo spots. Michelangelo Badio, my buddy, just released his uh, next CD. It's called uh, Hands Without a Shadow, Two Voices. And I did a solo with him on a song called On the Double, Track 9, with some other wonderful guitar players, including George Bellis, and uh, Vinnie Moore, Mark Tremonti from Creed. So there was a handful, Bill Peck, another Dean guy, wow. a handful of us guys that uh, played on that record with him. So we were really glad to do that. And, he, and Michelangelo Badio and Joe Stump played on my last CD called Hellborn on a song called The Voyage, Instrumental Shred Fest. So moving forward with a new band, you know, with Magic Circle Music, some new members in the band. I got Gabriel Anthony playing drums for me, who's with Pamela Moore. Brett Sullivan's playing bass from Mindwork Chamber. And uh, I've been working with a new singer, Warren, who does some stuff in a band here in Chicago called Heaven and Hell. It's like a Sabbath D.O. kind of band. And he's been working out really, really well for me for the, for the new DSG record, working on some demos right now. So keep it pretty busy with that and doing some clinics and shows coming up, man. How about you guys? How you guys doing over there? We're keeping cold here. <laughs> oh, the, I bet. It's the, cold here in Chicago. Is it cold? Yeah. You're keeping really busy, I can see. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, trying to keep pumping it out, you know. The 29th fret on your guitars, were, whose idea was that? Yours? That's mine. I've had it for a long time. I mean, guys out there have done other guitars, like Yuli Roth has got a Sky guitar. Michelangelo Badio did a rocket guitar uh, back in the late 80s. That was a 29 fret. And I wanted to do something like that in a seven string, in a V style body. I call it the dragster rail of all good seven strings because it's all neck. You could get all the way up to that high A at the 29th fret. And there's no wood in your way, nothing stopping you. And uh, the last five frets are designed kind of like mandolin frets, so you can get your fingers in there for good intonation. I use EMG pickups. I endorse them, 707s. My only tremolo in the world that I would ever use is Kaler, thanks to Gary, Kaler, and Pete. And Josh, I use their, uh, their tremolo system. And another neat thing about this guitar is from EMG, it's got a BTC control on it, which is a stacked EQ, because when you move the neck pickup back the extra two inches closer to the tremolo from it normally sitting at a 24 fret guitar you will add more high end and lose that warmth when you want that bluesy shred tone so what this stack knob does is allow me to turn the bass back up and roll the treble off on just the neck pickup so you can adjust it to whatever amp you're playing in or processor to keep that nice warm tone you know in that uh in whether it's a bluesy style or shredding or you know whatever you're into and also, you're keeping busy with instructional videotapes or yes, DVDs. Yes, I do. Well, I not instructional say. videotapes. <laughs> yeah, DVDs. I uh, haven't done the instructional fully thing yet, but I'm getting ready to do that either with uh, the Metal Method Rock House or, you know, Shred Academy or my Magic Circle music label. They uh, also are in the process of getting ready to do online lessons and instructional DVDs. So I've got some offers, and we're just talking to them now, my manager, Johnny Pettigrass, and uh, we're going to see how well, you know, which one seems to, you know, to be best for me and, and go that route. But I do do online guitar lessons uh, through webcam. If it doesn't matter what state you're in or whatever, if anybody's interested, you can go on my uh, MySpaces, uh, uh, myspace.com slash DSG, David Shankle Group, 
or the myspace.com slash David Shred Demon Shankle. And if you've got a webcam and Skypes or MSN Messenger, you could be in the comfort of your own home and you can do online lessons. How comfortable is that? It works really good, huh? Doing those online mm-hmm. lessons. Yeah, you don't have to come home from work, throw some food in your belly, and get in a car and be late for a half hour lesson that may be 20 minutes down the road or a half hour. Because if you end up five or 10 minutes late, you know, you're out that little bit of time. You know, you can stay home. You know, if you got to reschedule, you can reschedule with me. It's not a problem. And, uh, you know, you do it right in your home. You see me, I see you. And I've been doing it for about two and a half years. I got a lot of guys I do online. And it works out really well. You know, if you got a good computer and a good webcam you know you see each other very very well you don't get that stutter you know when your body moves it's like real-time footage so uh you know it works out pretty well your demonic solo video which i've seen you send it to me when's this mm-hmm. video coming out that we can all hopefully see in about the next week week or two right around christmas time it's uh it's going to be a bonus dvd video that is going to be on the DVD movie Jezebeth with Scream Queen, Brie Michaels. It's a horror movie about vampires and demonic stuff. And uh, they contacted me to do a solo for a scene where Brie is actually going through the change of being coming this, you know, demonic thing. Well, we went there and filmed it. Dean donated a Dave Mustaine guitar, and, uh, you know, we filmed just my hands playing the solo. And they're going to CGI that in with her in the scene so it looks like she's playing it. Well, prior to doing that, they decided to say, why don't we just film this guy in front of a green screen and actually pull out my Dean new V and actually play the solo. So that's what we did. I actually got the V arrived Saturday, the day before Sunday. Got it on Saturday, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Tweaked it, got it all set up, and by 9 in the morning Sunday, I was like about 70 miles away uh, shooting the video for this uh, Demon Solo. So that will be a, a bonus video on there. It'll be up on YouTube and all the sites here, hopefully in, the, in about the next two weeks, and everybody can see it. It's fast as hell. It's melodic, a lot of over-the-neck stuff that I've known for, and, uh, you know, I'm proud of it. It turned out really, really well, you know, and it's the first video with my new prototype DS7V. When you record... On your albums, do you do over-the-neck playing as you're recording? Uh, Not in the studio. People in the studio don't see you play, you know, over-the-neck, so it really doesn't matter, you know. But live and in the studio is a completely different thing. When live, you want to rip people's face off. You want to melt them. You want to blow them away. It's about showmanship, attitude, aggressiveness, and appearance, and flash. And and playing over-the-neck has got, you know, it's technically challenged. It looks cool. There's some, you know, some advantages to doing certain things and tapping and arpeggios and hand-over-hand arpeggios that I do. And I've been playing over-the-neck for a long time, so has my buddy Michelangelo Badio. And we both were doing that before we ever even knew each other. So, you know, when we met each other, we like 25 years ago, we just hit it off and have been friends ever since. You know, and, uh, you know, being in the studio is one thing. Live's a whole different scene, man. In your early days of with Man of War, did you do a lot of over-the-neck playing? Yes, I did over-the-neck playing in some of the videos and, you know, in certain parts of certain songs live. Yeah, that's part of my thing that I do that I'm known for. Oh. But a lot better now than it was back in those days. Just see the video Ashes to Ashes on YouTube or my site where I'm trading off solos with the keyboardist Shreddy. I'm doing a lot of over-the-neck, full six-string stuff in there. Uh, the Man of War reunion show in 2005, the Earthshaker Fest, uh, Glory of Achilles, 70,000 people. The whole solo is practically over the neck, and it really gives you guys an idea of what I can do with that, man. And in the Demon Solo video, there's a lot of over-the-neck going on. What stages of your career did you discover this unique talent that you had very early on even back in the club days back in like 1980 82 all around in there when i started really doing it you know there must have been an influence to do this or did you just come up with this idea say i'm gonna no you know actually the first time i ever saw that being done was danny gatton was playing on an old telecaster and had a towel over the neck and was playing his hand over the neck and was hitting notes and tapping and I thought that was really really cool and uh, and I was very young when I saw that and I just you know it just kind of came to me to try it like that and then as time went on there was a band called Holland that was playing in the Chicago scene and some people told me you need to go see this guy Michelangelo Badio he plays with a double neck guitar and uh, double axe guitar and we went and saw him play it the first time and saw him do it a little over the neck and I'm like wow I do over the neck stuff too so you know we became friends way back then in the early 80s because of that 
So he kind of was discovering it his way, and I kind of came across it doing it my way, man. Would you say the internet changed a lot of uh, promotions compared to the Man of War days in the early 90s? Oh, yeah. Internet's everything, man. You can make money. I mean, I've done five or six guest solo records just from the internet these days and being discovered on MySpace. And, uh, you know, the whole Voodoo God record, Shrunken Heads, that I'm involved in with Nigel from a Behemoth and Alex the Drummer. We've done demos for that already. Those guys found me from MySpace, you know, and not to mention quite a few other people that I've done guest solos albums for. T.D. Clark, Matt Mills. You know, a bunch of other guys, Joe Stump, Michelangelo Beatty, all of us, you know, you could you can you can you can do some good stuff with the internet. To YouTube, anybody could sit in their room and shoot videos of themselves playing or their band and get it up on YouTube and it's just that much more pro promotion for you. The internet and YouTube, the MySpaces, High Five, Facebook, Twitter, all this stuff is just another avenue for promotion, no matter what it is you're doing. When you're younger, how many hours did you practice a day? It's hard to say, man. You know, it varies. There's times I practice three hours a day. Sometimes I practice five or six, all depending on what was happening, you know. You get a lot of guys out there that sit around and go, I practice 10 hours every day. I ditch school and practice every day, 10 hours, 15 hours. How much of that's really true? Who knows? But, you know, what you put into it is what you get out of it. You make the best of it. Find the hot player in your town. Take lessons. Learn knowledge. Get books. Study. Go take lessons and learn as much variety of guitar playing as you can and move on to school like I did. You know, I graduated from Roosevelt University with a degree in jazz and classical guitar. You know, get as much knowledge and education as you can. How much time did you spend perfecting the guitar tone back in the day with Man of War? Well, tone changes all the time, you know. I've grown up playing through just tube amps, being younger and using old distortion pedals, and then you move on, you know, to effects processors that have got all the chorus delay, reverb, and harmonizer built in. And, you know, over the years, the tone changes. They come out with better amps and better effects processors, and, you know, you find the kind of tone that you like and tweak it. And, you know, it's that's a never-ending thing, always searching for some kind of tone to make things better and try and, and try and get a better sound for yourself you know you so that's always an ongoing thing a lot okay. of great tones out there do you keep on working with other uh, people on albums and stuff like putting your guitar into it I, like I said I just Michelangelo Badio just released his new record and I'm a guest soloist on that uh, Matt Mills is coming out with his next record me Joe Stump George Bellis are playing some solos on that there's a band in Chicago called Asylum. I've got a guest solo on there that I did. I think Michelangelo Badio played on that as well. Uh, a few other people, the demos for the uh, Voodoo Gods album, Shrunken Heads. You know, that stuff's out there, and we're going to be doing the full-length record. And, uh, you know, quite a, few, quite a few other guys too, man. So there's a handful of things out there floating around guest solo stuff. Do you see any tours in the near future? To promote the DSG? Well, I'm going to be doing some guitar clinics coming in here going into the new year. DSG is talking with our management and some other booking agencies about getting us overseas, hopefully doing some shows. There's a show, a festival coming up overseas, I think, in March or April with Deep Purple and like 10 other bands, I think Simple Tour and Angra. And uh, the promoters want DSG, but we're just waiting to find out if this whole festival is really going to happen. And when it does, we'll book some club shows over there too. Right now, I've just formed the new band and had some personnel changes and have about seven songs into the next record. And, uh, you know, once the record's done in demos, you know, the band will be rehearsing a lot, getting in the studio, recording it, you know, while I'm working on an instrumental record too, doing instructional DVDs and most likely continuing to do guest solo spots for other guys' records as well and teaching. Any future uh, manual concert dates? Are you going to be uh, rejoining manual? Nothing has been talked about as of now, but you never know what Joey might pull. It was a very good success in 2005 when we did the Earthshaker Fest, and I hope he does decide to do it again because it was a smash. And if he does, I'd be more than honored to get back out there and play with the old boys again. I love them. They're my brothers of true metal, and we're all still great friends. So, David Shanko, it's been a pleasure talking to you. You too, man. I enjoyed this. It went smooth, and thank you very much, man. I'm glad we were able to get this in. Keep in touch. Okay, buddy. Take care, man. Nice job.